Hello everyone, Andy Wilberton here with another edition of Journeys in Darkness and Light, today featuring the new releases from March 2023. And forgive me for being a couple of days late with this, but I think you'll like what I have for you today. Some really good stuff from the classic film noir era. How about that? We kick things off on March the 7th with a film that's a precursor to film noir, and some have even called it a blueprint for classic noir. This is Asphalt, a silent German film from 1929, directed by Joe May, with cinematography by Gunther Rittau, who shot The Blue Angel one year later. Albert, played by Gustav Froehlich, is a by-the-book, straight-laced Berlin traffic cop who's assigned to escort a shoplifter named Elsa, played by American actress Betty Amon, to the police station. And just so you know, Albert lives with his parents. Elsa is just too much for Albert, and although he knows this, they become involved. But when Elsa's brute of a boyfriend catches them, Things get complicated. Elsa isn't a cookie-cutter femme fatale, and Albert isn't your typical sap. These characters have great depth, and the atmosphere of the film, literally straight out of Weimar, Germany, is superb. For anyone interested in the evolution of film noir, Asphalt is a must. The only extra here is a commentary by film historian Anthony Slide, but that's enough for me. I hope you're in the mood for Joan Crawford, because she's coming your way twice in March. First, with a new 4K release of Mildred Pierce, directed by Michael Curtiz, coming from Criterion on March the 7th. Now, this is an upgrade from the 2017 Criterion Blu-ray release. One week later, on March 14th, from Warner Archive, we get more Joan Crawford. Flamingo Road from 1949, once again directed by Michael Curtiz. Flamingo Road finds Joan down south as a carnival dancer named Lane Bellamy. But when the carnival has to hit the road to escape its debts, Lane gets stranded in Bolden City, where a deputy, played by Zachary Scott, takes a liking to Lane and finds her a job as a waitress. Ah, but the deputy's boss... Sheriff Titus Simple, played by Sidney Greenstreet, doesn't approve of Lane hanging out with his deputy. Simple has bigger plans for him, and hanging out with Lane isn't on the agenda. If you have this one on DVD, it's time for an upgrade. I'll be surprised if there are any special features on this one, so don't hold your breath. Back in 2017, Arrow released its first volume of film noir classics called four film noir classics, which included The Dark Mirror, Secret Beyond the Door, Force of Evil, and The Big Combo. Now, more than five years later, we're getting a second set on March the 20th, Film Noir Classics Volume 2. Now, this is a Region B set, and all of these films are available as Region A releases from Kino Lorber. So you may be thinking, hey, no problem, I've got the Kinos, I can skip this set. Not so fast. This collection includes some extras that your Kino discs may not have. Let's take a look. First of all, we have The Suspect, a period noir from 1944, directed by Robert C. Odmack, starring Charles Lawton and Ella Raines. Now, this was released on Region A from Kino, in 2021. I reviewed this one for the Dark Pages in the May-June 2021 issue, if you want to check that out. Next, we have The Sleeping City from 1950, directed by George Sherman. In this one, Richard Conte is an undercover cop with limited medical training, posing as a doctor to bust up a hospital drug ring. Now, previously, this was released in 2020 as part of Film Noir, The Dark Side of Cinema, Volume 3. I explored this one in a video devoted to the entire set, which I'll link to in the notes. The discussion of The Sleeping City comes in at about the 5 minute 40 second mark. Next, we have Thunder on the Hill from 1951, 
which gives us some nun noir with Claudette Colbert, which I explore on another video talking about the dark side of cinema, volume two, a release from 2020. The Thunder on the Hill segment kicks off that video. The film was also released by Universal as a standalone last year. And the set closes with Six Bridges to Cross from 1955. This appeared on The Dark Side of Cinema, Volume 4. George Nader plays Edward, a cop who takes a young criminal named Jerry, played by Tony Curtis, under his wing. Edward is convinced he's made an impression on Jerry, enough to make him go straight, but Jerry has other ideas. I'll put a link in the notes that covers all the extras, but you're getting some of the same extras ported over from the Kino releases, plus a few new interviews and video essays, and a collector's book with new writing on the films by various film critics. Again, check the notes and the links for more information. Again, this is a Region B release. The Australian label Imprint released this film a couple of years ago, and on March 21st, we have a U.S. Region A release of Sorry, Wrong Number from 1948, coming to us from Shout Factory. The Shout Factory edition includes all the extras from the Imprint version, plus a new audio commentary by film and pop culture podcasters Sam Hurley and Emily Higgins. So you can look for the new releases post that I did from February 2021 before I started doing videos, so you'll have to read it. I will link that in the notes to let you know what to expect. Last year, Classic Flicks released an adaptation of Mickey Spillane's I, the Jury, and on March 21st, they follow it up with the release of another Spillane adaptation, The Long Wait, from 1954. Now, this is a non-Mike Hammer picture starring Anthony Quinn as Johnny McBride, a hitchhiker who loses his memory when the car he's driving crashes. Wouldn't you know it, Johnny finds his way to his hometown only to discover that he's a murder suspect and has stolen 250 k from the bank where he worked. Tough times. The film, directed by Victor Seville, also co-stars Charles Coburn, Gene Evans, Peggy Castle, and film noir regulars Barry Kelly and Jay Adler. This one is struck from a new 4K restoration and includes a new audio commentary by Max Allen Collins, co-author of the brand new book Spillane, King of Pulp Fiction, with James L. Trailer. And on March 28th, Vinegar Syndrome releases a standard edition of Flesh and Fantasy, a terrific anthology film from 1943. Now, if you picked up the limited edition, you know this is a fantastic release. I made a pre-release video, which I will link to in the notes. The only difference between the limited edition and the standard edition is that the limited edition has a nice slipcover, which this one does not. Do yourself a favor and pick this movie up. Also on March the 28th from Kino Lorber, the fourth and final season in the McGray series from 1963-64. So that's going to do it for March, a pretty good month. Very nice to see some classic noir coming our way, which we haven't seen in a while. Remember that release dates often change, and if they do, I will let you know. And please let me know of any titles that I have missed, and I'll be glad to add them to the notes. Thanks for watching, take care, and watch some great film noir.